In today's Catholic Woman segment, we head to the White House, and that's where two Catholic women serve as advisors to President Trump. They aren't afraid to profess their faith publicly. Before being named as White House Senior Advisor for Strategic Communications, Mercedes Schlapp was a well-known political analyst. As you can see here, she was a frequent guest on EWTN News Nightly. Helen Ferre, White House Director of Media Affairs, was a Spanish language journalist and headed Hispanic communications for the GOP. I sat down with both women at the Eisenhower Old Executive Office Building, located next to the White House, to talk about being a Catholic woman in politics. Welcome Mercedes Schlapp and Helen Ferre to the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Mercedes, you have always been a passionate conservative voice and a Catholic voice. Are you able to use your Catholic voice in the White House? Yes, I feel like I'm able to use my Catholic voice in the White House. My faith is very much a part of who I am. When difficult decisions are going to be made, I'm able to step back, pray, and really get the wisdom from God in what I do every day in my job and as I try to uh, help lead our team. So I think that that's very critical. I understand you have holy water somewhere. I do, how did, goodness gracious, yes, there is holy water, which sometimes scares the staff when I start bringing it out and, and start uh, <laughs> Throwing sprinkling it, it on. But actually it was through my parish priest who gave it to me uh, and I brought it over to the White House as well. So it is very much a part, as well as the statue of, of the Virgin Mary in my office. Helen, working in the White House is high pressure. How do you maintain your faith under these circumstances? Is it a problem? For me, it's not a problem at all. It's not, to, to the contrary, it's what I rely on every morning and every night. Um, I'm one of those people who has holy cards all around. I mean, I have them in my purse. I have one um, on my desk of the Virgin Mary. And I have that as a reminder because I need to always remember what's really important. So when I'm walking to work, I'm praying in Our Father and Hail Mary, and it helps me remember who I really am. You have grown children, Mercedes. You have <laughs> five children. Yeah. I think women in our audience want to know how do you balance things? The, the balance does come with having a very big support system. Quite frankly, Grandma Sue, Matt's mom, she comes and stays with us three weeks at a time. What you find when you have a big family is that the older girls help out with the younger girls. I have my brother and my sister-in-law also living in the area. And I think we all understand, as I remind my children every day, whenever they're like, Mom, you're working late, I always tell them, think about those military moms and dads who are deployed in Afghanistan, Iraq, they're gone for 18 months at a time and they don't get to see their kids. And so I just always try to remind my children, children that our nation, it's fragile. We have a democracy that we have a responsibility as people who are able to give back to defend. Helen, what role did faith have for you in joining the White House? People who are not of faith don't understand that we don't leave our faith, our religions in the pews in church when we walk out. We have to live that way and it's part of our conscience and who we are. And so the ability to have an administration that really advocates for that, that stands for that, that fights for it is really important. And so that made a big difference for me. When I was in secular media, I was told I was not allowed to wear my cross on television. What's the message you would have to women who fear retribution for showing their faith at work? I think that there are lots of ways of showing your faith, but I think that for me, the, the religious symbol of wearing a cross, I think that should be honored and that should be respected. But I would say that um, it's how we live our faith that's really ultimately the biggest and most important lesson. Mercedes, women are expected to play a significant role in the upcoming midterm elections. This is an interesting statistic. 74% of women, Catholic women, intend to vote in the midterm election. What do you want Catholic women to know about President Trump? President Trump is a champion uh, for the religious community. And I find that the president understands that for too long and in the past administration, there was a sense of trying to silence those of us who were religious. There is no question about it. There was a bullying. There was a shaming to be one of those who felt that life was sacred in all its ways and needed to be protected and defended. And so now we have an administration that helps provide a broader platform for people to feel more comfortable. And I think um, that for the president, it is about giving that access to uh, people of faith. 
Mercedes, President Trump is the most pro-life president we have ever seen. And he has supported several other issues really important to Catholics, conscience rights, religious freedom. Are you pleased with the progress the president and this White House have made on these issues? Yeah, I'm incredibly pl pleased by the progress that the president has made. And he obviously addressed uh, those that participated in the March for Life this past January. That, of course, being a historic moment for this president. And it, he, it's very heartfelt. EWTN News Nightly covers these stories every single day. But when you look at mainstream media, rarely is it covered. And if it is covered, it isn't positive. So how important is it to your offices to get coverage of these issues onto mainstream media? The mainstream media obviously has a very different agenda. And as we've seen time and time again, some of these uh, media celebrities uh, actually mock Christians, are critical of Christians, and they don't stand up with for average Americans, for everyday Americans who practice their faith. And that is why we have to spend every day of our lives protecting America and ensuring that every individual has the right to speak up, that every individual has the right to practice their religion. And that's one of the reasons why I know Helen and I work hard every single day to make sure, uh, along with the president and the team, to make sure that we protect our freedoms. Thank you so much, Mercedes Schlapp, Helen Ferre, for joining us. In tomorrow's segment, we look to the next generation of Catholic women. I sit down with a young firebrand, the founder and executive director of Girl Talk. It's a nonprofit group that brings moral support to high school and college age girls. Now, she tells me the group's philosophy is deeply rooted in her faith. Everything is informed with that beautiful Catholic teaching that we are made in the image and likeness of God, right? That we have dignity and that we are worth it and worthy. So every time we talk to the girls, we tell them that you are enough, you are worthy, and you are loved. She also talked about being authentic. Uh-oh, you see me eating cupcakes there. Let's get that off of there. <laughs> I talked to girls involved in the program about navigating life's challenges as a young Catholic woman. And yes, cupcakes were involved and eaten. Yesterday on Facebook, I asked you to share your stories of the Catholic women in your life. And I want to share a couple of comments I received that really touched me. Holly Duggan writes, thank you for introducing this feature, highlighting women who are actively integrating their faith into real life stories like these. They are needed. My journey includes Catholic women in my life who stayed at home and gifted me with time and care as well as those using their talents to lead others spiritually or in modeling making ethical decisions in the business world. Gosia Maria Sanchez says, I would like to give mention to pro-life OBGYN Dr. Monique Rubero, who works with women in the Philadelphia region. She has been an important voice in our community and an inspiration to me personally. Keep your comments coming at facebook.com slash Lauren Ashburn. EWTN.